what we have discussed is when looking at this, if x squared minus 3x is a factor of x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 6, then we know that x squared minus 3 times something is equal to that. Right? That is our general understanding of a factor. If something is a factor of something else, then we can multiply that factor times something else, and we're going to get our, um, that expression. Right? We could also look at it. We could also say then, well, we could also write x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 6 divided by, right? If something is a factor, that means you can divide by it, right? If 4 is a factor of 12, you can take 12 divided by 4, right? So here we have division. Well, we just talked about how can we use division here. Um, how can we use division with, um, with polynomials? And again, the first one we're going to want to step up is long division. Now, the reason why I'm using long division and not trying to go with my shortcutted version synthetic is because, if you guys remember on your notes, I can only use um, I can only use synthetic division for a when I have a linear factor or when I'm working with my zeros. If you guys look at this, if you're going to find the zeros here, you're going to have two zeros, correct? Yep. So you'd have to actually do synthetic division twice, which I'll work, which I'll do uh, in my next example. But you just can't do synthetic division once and then get the full answer that we're going to look for. Did I miss one? I did. Minus 5x squared. OK. 5x squared minus 3x plus 6. All right, so let's go through this problem. Again, guys, if you need help understanding this, when you guys are doing division, you're only going to use the, the first term of your divisor. So my recommendation is that you make sure you have your divisor written in standard form, because you want to have the leading term, the term with the highest power, first. So you're only going to divide the x squared. We're only going to use this as our division into this dividend. So how many times does x squared divide into x to the fourth? A little confused by that? Just write it to the side. How many times does x squared divide into x to the fourth? x squared times. So we put that up top. That is the first term in our quotient. Now we have to make sure we multiply this times both terms. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 3x is a negative 3x squared. I don't want to put the x squared under the x cubed because they're not like terms, right? You don't want to put like terms with like terms. But I don't have an x cubed here, right? So if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can use place values. Okay? The main important thing, though, I want to drill down, guys, is you have to subtract the two rows, and you're going to want to use parentheses. Okay? And you can always check to make sure you did your division correctly, is because once you divide and then multiply, you should get the exact same term. x squared, x to the fourth minus x to the fourth should give you 0 x to the fourth, which is just 0. Right? You should get that every single time. Now, x cubed minus 0 x cubed, you really just subtract and use x cubed. Here's the trick. Everybody, that, usually most students that get these wrong, guess where they, get, guess where they make their mistakes? Adding and subtracting. Seriously, that's where mistakes are made, adding and subtracting. That's why I think using parentheses is so important. Negative 5x squared minus a negative 3x squared. You're minusing a negative, which is the same thing as adding a positive. So therefore, that turns into a positive. So it's negative 5x. So that's a minus 2x squared. Negative 3x minus 0x is just going to be a negative 3x. 6 minus 0 is a positive 6. Okay, so that was like one round. Now we do it again. How many times does x squared divide into x? Oops. How many times does x squared divide into x cubed? x times. So then you have to multiply again. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. Okay, now, now you go ahead and again subtract the rows. And this time I'm not going to use place values. OK, I'm just going to subtract them. Or I'm just going to really bring them down. Because as you guys can see, if you use the place values or don't, you're really just bringing down those terms. right? So that's why a lot of times we'll just say, hey, bring them down. But anyways, this goes to x cubed minus x cubed is a 0x cubed. A lot of times, guys, we just don't even write it in there. Bring down the negative 2x squared. 
negative 3x minus a negative 3x. That's really negative 3x plus 3x, which is going to be a 0x, which is non existent, and then plus 6. OK, last time. x squared divides into negative 2x squared. How many times does x squared divide into a negative 2x squared? Negative 2 times. And then we'll just do this, negative 2x squared minus 6. Subtract your rows, 0 and 0. And again, we get a remainder of 0. So now that's important, guys, because if we didn't get a remainder of 0, then this wouldn't be a factor, correct? Right? If you have, like, we don't say, like, 4 is not a factor of 13. 4 doesn't evenly divide into 13. There's a remainder of 1 there, right? So if we do all this work and we get a remainder, well, we have an issue here because it says x squared minus 3 is a factor. So it has to have a remainder of 0. So we made a mistake somewhere. But in this case, we got 0, so we know we're good. So again, now we need to understand what this means. Again, guys, this means x, q, x squared minus 3 times this equals that. Right? So now I can rewrite this in there. I can say this is x squared plus x minus 2. x squared minus or plus x minus 2. All right? So what I've done is I've taken a polynomial and I've rewritten, rewritten it in a, yes? Yes. Yes. So at, let me continue. So we have this. So we, what we did is we just rewrote this in a factored form, right? We just rewrote it as a product of two factors. Now, there's something important that's going on with these two factors. Are these two factors linear? No. So what we want to do if we're asked to find the linear factorization or to find the zeros, we'd want to continually factor them down. So how do we find the zeros? of x squared, oh, let's move it over here. So basically, guys, we have f of x equals x squared minus 3 times x squared plus x minus 2. Right? This is just the factored form of that. So long division allowed us now to break it down into our factors. Can I now find the factors here? Right? And this is what we did last time, guys. What happens when you have you know, x squared minus 3? Like, you can just use the zero product property if you want to. Um, x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. x equals plus or minus square root of 3. Here, x squared plus x minus 2 is equal to 0. Can we factor this further? x plus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. x equals negative 2. And x equals 1. So now I just found the fact, now I just found all the zeros. But what if I wanted to actually write this as a linear factorization? What that means is I need to be able to factor this down further, which would be x minus square root of 3 times x plus the square root of 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 1. Is everybody OK with me going from my zeros to my factors? That was something we practiced last class for you. But now we found all the zeros, just given one factor. That was kind of cool.